Hello, I'm Timothy Perfect from Two Canoe Software, and today I want to talk to you about what we have that's new in Xcreds 3.1. We got a slew of new features that allows you to do a lot more with Xcreds, and these are some features I've been looking forward to for a long time, and customers have been requesting them for a while, and we finally got them implemented and released, and I'm excited to see to be able to put these out into the world and see how um, they'll be used. So we'll go through them one by one, and um, and then we'll have some associated demo videos that go along with this one um, to show you how each one works. But this will kind of walk you through an overview of all the new features in Xcreds 3.1. So the first one is Active Directory Login and Username and Password Window. So this is, uh, let me show you what it looks like. So this is the ability to log in to uh, a user, an Active Directory user, using our local username and login window. In prior versions of Xcred, we had a button that said um, Mac login window, and you could select that, and it would allow you to um, log in as a local user. We've extended that, so now we have our own local username and password window, and we've enabled that with Active Directory as well. So in the preferences, you just specify your domain, um, and then when you log in at this login window, it'll allow you, it will um, create the user account provision or provision the user account and create the home directory and create the keychain and then log the user in. In subsequent logins, it'll check that password and update that password so the password gets, um, uh, that stays synchronized with, with um, the Active Directory um, uh, user. All right, so the setup is really simple. As I mentioned, you just specify in the preferences, there's a new key, new key called AD domain. If you specify that, and it's able to, if the Mac's able to figure out the um, username or the uh, domain controller, um, it'll automatically uh, be able to authenticate that user. And so just put the user and the user's credentials in and then log in. Um, any of the users that are defined in Active Directory users and computers uh, on Active Directory will be able to log in um, to, that, to that Mac. And one of the other nice things is that since we've logged in, authenticated against a domain controller, we're able to get a Kerberos ticket. And so you can see here that I have a the Ticket Viewer app open, and this allows you to get a, it gives you a Kerberos ticket. So now if you try to mount a file share or do any operations that uses Kerberos, you would have that ticket and be able to do single sign-on with it. Um, all right, so that's Active Directory uh, login with Xcreds. The next feature is admin group support, and this applies to OpenID Connect, and this is a feature we've had folks ask for for a while. It's the ability to allow you to log in and determine if that user that's having the account provision is an admin user or not an admin user. And the way it's set up is uh, based on configurations in your identity provider. So in your preferences, we have a new key called create admin if group member, and it, if you specify the group, UUID and the identity token has that UUID in their group membership, um, that user will be an admin. This only applies the first time that they log in when the account is provisioned. It makes them an admin or not an admin, um, but it does allow you to configure it at the um, uh, inside your cloud provider. So the question is, where do you get that UUID? And so if you, at this example of an in Azure, if you create a group and you um, uh, add users to it, and then you define the, or you can find the open, uh, the object ID, and then you would just put that in your configuration profile um, for, uh, for the configuration. And then if the user is a member of that group, that UUID will come down with their identity token, and they'll automatically become an, they will become an admin the first time they log into that machine. All right, so that is uh, the ability to do provision admin users. So the next, um, new feature is called Preferences Override, and it's a script that allows, local, allows administrators to have more, a more customized experience with Xcreds. And so um, the way that it works is that in your configuration profile that you push out to all your clients for the preferences, you define a script path, a local script path. We usually recommend user local Xcred slash the name of script dot um, sh so then it knows to use that script if it's available. So they'll only use it if that's defined in the configuration profile. And then that script needs to be, uh, needs to be installed. You can use whatever method, use MDM, Apple Remote Desktop, whatever, SSH, to copy that script down. 
and then make sure that the preferences are set correctly or the permissions are set correctly on that that um, uh, script um, because otherwise somebody else could modify it or run it. So it has to be owned by root. Can only be um, uh, can only be writable by root. Otherwise, it won't run it. But if those things are set up, it will run it and it will return a plist. And any keys defined in that plist will override the ones that you have defined in the configuration profile. So why, why is that important? Well, it allows the machine to override those preferences based on local logic. So for example, if all the machines that have a specific IP address, they we want them to automatically have a different desktop pattern, right? Or maybe a different identity provider. You could provide those that, that configuration locally that would be determined based on the IP. So it could be the laptops on one subnet versus another, that behavior could be different. Um, uh, and allows, just really allows the customization based on that logic in that script. So we provide an example script, of course, for you to be able to, to see how it works, um, but you can extend it for however, want, however you want. And so the two kind of key examples is the uh, an admin password for the key, for keychain reset. So this allows you, if the user forgets their local password, allows you to provide an admin username and password without hard coding it into preferences. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And also another example we provide is machine-specific backgrounds. And actually, the example we provide is it just does a random background based on the Mac OS desktop patterns, or wallpaper, or desktop backgrounds, I guess. So um, here's how you actually set it up. So inside of your configuration profile, there's a override script path. And in this one, I set up for user local xcreds override.sh. And so then I copy that script down, made sure the permissions owned by root, only writable by root, and then that'll be uh, available. So you can see here that I just changed the, the um, permissions. So the ownership is, is uh, owned by root and staff. Um, and the, uh, the permissions are 700, which means only root can really do anything with it. And then um, I show the results of it. And then one of the things we recommend is you actually run it. So I ran it here and I tried it as an as a admin user. It didn't work. Then I did it with sudo and it did return it back. And you can see that it returns this local username and password. And so what that allows you to do is, is override those preferences. And any of the preferences in the plist in the configuration profile can be overwritten, but only if it's obviously the script is, is uh, defined inside that um, configuration profile. So. Let's talk a little, that's, so that's a preference override. One of the big reasons that we did that was for this user initiated reset password and the keychain reset. And why is this important? Because we, we when a user forgets their local password, um, having an admin having to intervene to change their um, local password um, can uh, increase help desk tickets and, and user frustration. So we want to find a way to be able to do that in a way that was consistent with the security policy. So why is this an issue? So a user walks up to a machine and they, they sign into their cloud password and they had signed in this machine before so the local account is there. It has the password for their cloud provider but they may have changed their password outside on a web browser or on some other machine. And so now the passwords are out of sync. And there's no way for us to know what the local password is to be able to unlock the keychain. So we can do in the user session, we, the keychain's already unlocked, we can get access to the local password and update it if we want to, but when we're at the login window, we can't do that. So what we do is we prompt the user. And if the user has forgotten their local password, it now means they have to find an admin to be able to log in and reset it. So if we use the preferences override script, we can now provide a username and password to xcreds for the local admin, and that allows the user to determine if that um, password can be overwritten. So if they don't know their password, they just click on reset and it'll go ahead and move the keychain out of the way, create a new keychain, and reset their pa local password to be the same as their cloud password. So the two new keys we have is local admin username and local admin password. Um, and so you can see here that they are, it's not recommended to set them in the preferences. You can set them in the preferences um, for testing. Um, obviously, it's just something that a user, could, uh, anybody on the machine have access to, so they could see what the username and password in the profile is. What you really want to do is hide this away um, so it only can be used by brute or xcreds. 
Um, but also, we didn't really want to store it on disk because that can be, uh, that can be risky as well. So uh, the script can use any method it needs to to get access to those passwords. So you may put the passwords on a web server or you use curl. You might put them in the system keychain. Whatever your local, uh, your, your security policy allows for storing local passwords. In fact, if you want to use LAPS, which is the uh, local admin um, password system for storing, for managing local passwords, we can get access to that just because you can use that script to look in LAPS and return back that uh, username and password. So whatever's consistent with your policy, um, it allows you to provide that. So once you provide that, once Xcreds determines that it has access to admin username and password to reset the user's password, then a reset button appears. And so um, if the user enters in their cloud password, it determines that there's already an existing account, but the password's different. It'll prompt them for that, that prior local password. If they don't know that prior lo lo local password, they can now click on reset. And what the reset does is it'll take that local admin username and password and, and move the keychain out of the way and uh, create a new keychain and reset the local password to that cloud password, seamlessly allowing them to log in. Um, so there's another key that's associated with this, and this is mainly for labs, is the ability to overwrite the password silently. And so it's keychain is less important. The user doesn't really have a, a necessarily a keychain that they have information on a lab computer. So somebody logs into computer one in, in a lab and they come back three months later and they log in again and they forget um, the password, their, their Azure password changes and they're prompted for their old local password. They don't know what it is. Uh, they don't, they, in fact, they won't be prompted. It'll just log in and overwrite it. And um, the keychain will be moved out of the way and a new keychain will be created. So it looks basically like they're just logging in with that cloud password. Um, but then the local password is set to that cloud password, but they're not prompted for any information. So that makes it a lot smoother for lab environments or situations where you don't really care about um, preserving that keychain. So that's uh, the um, high-level features of all the, of the new features in XCREDS 3.1. For more information, please visit us at twocanoes.com slash XCREDS. Um, also, you can visit us at, uh, or send us an email at info at twocanoes.com. And also, we have an active Slack channel on the macadmins.org Slack channel and hashtag XCREDS. So thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to... Um, uh, having you download XCreds and be able to use it. Thank you.